We opened an antique store, but it had to be family friendly, where we could work and still have fun. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain or open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life. This is our adventure. This is Curiosity Inc. So this week's steps are pretty clear. We have the frame welded in. We have to lower the engine down and make sure it's going to fit properly and line up with where the drive shaft is going to go. I'm going to take my new new Model A rims. They're hard, hardly new. They're pretty crusty, but I've got a good set of them. I'm going to take them in and get them painted this week. Uh, and also, we're going to try and uh, find a drive shaft and torque tube for the car so we can look at getting that put together at some point too. So let's uh, follow along and check out how this old race car is going to come along this week and uh, let's try and get some work done. So the engine area is about correct. It's about what we need it to be. Uh, we've got the engine lowered in here right now. Um, the challenge that we're running into is that uh, the original motor that was run in this car was not run with the transmission, which is why they had cut out the old frame and done some other stuff to it to make fuel pumps work well. We might have to do a tiny little notch here as well to drop this down about three inches inside the frame. Um, to reinforce it so it's going to be sturdy, we're going to build up an engine mount on top of that. Um, and then we're going to add some fish plating in here um, on either side of the welds. You can see um, the frame is pretty much welded up, just have to add some fish plates in. The other challenge uh, is that the uh, brake pedal and the clutch pedal go on this one shaft. We only need one pedal for clutch because the brake, if you recall, is basically just going to be a handle on the outside that connects to the rear wheel. That's all they had and that's what we're going to do. So I don't need to run two pedals here, so we're going to trim the shaft um, and just run one, one pedal on that shaft. Uh, that way we don't have to uh, notch or trim or do anything with the frame here. Um, and we'll have to be careful too that we get the pedal in place before we lower the engine down because uh, after this drops down it's going to be sitting right inside the frame and it will not be easy to get a pedal on and off the shaft once it's in the frame. You'll have to take the engine out. So um, that's what we're going to have to do. The other thing that we're running into is that the, um, the height of the engine will drop down a bit uh, so we can clear the hood here, or clear the radiator, but the radiator that we have in the car right now is uh, not out of a Model A, so I'm gonna have to find a Model A radiator so that it will hook up to all the uh, the, the lines and everything okay, the coolant lines, so um, right now they're kind of in the wrong spot, so um, yeah, a little bit of work to do, so uh, next step is gonna be notching out that frame and trying to drop it down. So with the engine more or less in place, we have to get it at the right height so that it lines up with the rear end so the drive shaft uh, isn't going to be at a crazy angle and uh, we've had to notch the frame so we can put a uh, engine mount and then uh, fish plate it in so uh, right now it would clear with the hood going on top so we're going to start uh, mocking up the um, the brackets the uh, the engine mounts and uh, start getting that ready and for this we picked up some raw steel, some good thick heavy gauge uh, steel that can be cut down into length and that's what we're going to use to make our engine mounts with and then drill the holes through to uh, mount know, the engine. So on to the next. But it's a little bit cold to do welding today so what I'm going to do is take these rims in, get them sandblasted and move on to the next thing. Can't let the weather slow me down but you can't do a whole lot of welding when it's minus 30 degrees Celsius outside. So just coming back from the sandblasting and painting shop, uh, the rims look really good. I decided to do them in um, kind of a semi-gloss black. A couple reasons for that. One is I'm, I've got a specific type of look I'm going for with this race car. Um, black was a really common color to use back then. And the gloss paints just didn't exist like we have them now. They did have uh, gloss, but it was a uh, brushed on lacquer and it would fade really fast. So if you go with a really shiny paint on an old race car like this, it's just not gonna look authentic. Um, plus the body of the car itself wouldn't have been sprayed. It actually would have been brush painted. Uh, brush painting was really common in the teens and 20s. Uh, they did end up doing some spray, but on a race car like this, this would have been like trackside, some guy in his garage, painting the car himself. So to make it authentic, I'm going to try and actually do a um, nice, but authentic looking brush paint job on this car. So um, yeah, the black room should offset it nicely. And then I just have to decide what color I'm gonna do for the body. But uh, still lots of work to do before then, but um, I have to head out of town now 
to a shop called George Moyers Restorations that deals in classic Model A and Ford parts where they have the tires for my car in stock and on hand and uh, we're going to see if we can get some tires and tubes. So that's where I'm headed next. So I'm here at George Moyers. This is a mecca for early Ford parts. If you're looking for anything for your early Ford, they have all kinds of stuff from Model T, Model A, right through 1956, some of the early V8 stuff. And as I'm looking around, this place has all kinds of stuff, but they're very well stocked in the back and not many places can say that they have tires for Model A on hand. So I'm gonna pick these tires up and hopefully get them installed on my car later on this week. So as you can see, all kinds of great parts in stock. We're gonna work our way upstairs here. And we're gonna see if maybe there's a torque tube for my car as well. Cause as you know, the drive shaft had been shortened down to about a foot long. Um, so I can't put a factory drive shaft or torque tube back on this car. So I'm gonna have to find one that I can modify and shorten up. So we're gonna see what they have in stock and with luck, we'll find some cool parts. All right, so this is the variety of- Take your pick. So these are all Model A torque tubes? Torque tubes yeah. and, and drive shafts? Uh, some drive shafts, yeah. Okay. So what are we looking at for price on like a combo? Again, we've got 20 bucks on, on uh, the drive shafts. Okay, well that seems pretty yeah. fair. Yeah. All right, well I think we're gonna be in luck. So it was actually a really productive visit. Not only was I able to get the tires and tubes in stock, I was able to find a torque tube and drive shaft that I can modify and, um, and get put in my car. So yeah, lots of great stuff. I got some uh, hood latches that I can use for the new hood that we're gonna have built. Basically, it was one-stop shopping for everything I needed. So if you're working on an old Ford, give these guys a try. Um, I'll put their website on here as well so you can kind of see what it is. Uh, but try George, George Moyers if you're ever looking for vintage Ford parts. So I'm gonna take my uh, fresh load of goodies back home and uh, call it a day. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for tuning in. The car is starting to make progress and this is the first thing, the wheels, this will be the first thing I've actually had painted. This is the fresh start for my new car. Really looking forward to it. Um, so don't forget to subscribe or check us out online at curiosityedmonton.ca and we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.